Hello and welcome to another model rail video. Now today we're going to be building upon the last video we did where we installed sensor signals from train tech and now we're going to install automatic train control. Now you join me on the floor of my layout room. The layout is just over here to my right. Uh, the reason for that is because I don't know where the signals are going to go on my layout yet, I don't want to be cutting the rails and making isolated sections where I might regret it later on. So I've got a temporary setup here, which is big enough for me to show you how automatic train control works. Now I have set up the two sensor signals again with the wire connecting them in exactly the same way as they were on the layout in the last video. The difference is that we are going to be adding in the control from this. This is the TrainTech RL1 relay controller. I'll show a close up of it on the screen now because I can appreciate that this is a distance away. And this is going to cut the power to the rail when the signal is on red. So the first thing that you need to do, I've done it on this signal already, is to cut the rail and create an insulated section, a little block section on the inside rail nearest the signal at each signal point. And that is where the power is going to be cut. So with the track cut and you have your isolated sections, you now need to solder wires to the side of the rails. Obviously the soldering iron gets very hot, be very careful, but you need a wire on either side of the brake preceding each signal. And then you also need, particularly for me in this situation, a couple of power feeds for the relay controller itself. So I'll just solder those up and then we will move on to getting everything connected and wired. Okay, so whilst the soldering iron is cooling, you can see I've soldered all the, the wires now, uh, we can get on with connecting the wires to the relay controller. Now each controller is capable of doing two signals and your wires from the uh, always live and normally closed sections before the signals go into the sections at the bottom labelled COM for common and normally closed which is here on NC. Now CH1 is for the signal up the line and CH2 is the one that follows it. These are really simple, they're just a flathead screwdriver, screwing them out, putting the wire in and screwing them closed. And that is all there is to it as far as wiring the relay controller to the signals is concerned. All we have to do now is wire the power to the controller, connect the signal power to the signal, and then we'll be there. So now all of the track feeds are connected to the relay controller. The last thing we've got to do in terms of the signalling is connect the S contacts here to the contact on the signal. Now this tells the controller what colour the signal is so that it knows whether or not it needs to be uh, providing power to the section of track that we cut or not. Again these are just screwdrivered in and then on the other side they just pop in to the middle one of the three signal holes 
that you can see on the layout. So they just connect in like so. The beauty of the train tech system is the simplicity. And now all we have to do is wire up the power here. And these just screw in. And that is everything done. Obviously on yours, the wires will be a lot neater, but as I said, this is all just temporary for me. So let's power it up and see if it works. Okay, so everything is now wired up. It does look like a mass of wires. Yours will obviously be a lot neater than this. Um, there's a few things that I negated to think about when doing it on this temporary setup of track. Number one was the power wires that we needed. So this big black wire around the end is a dropper wire. There's a loop of wire there that's a dropper wire. The only thing you actually need for the uh, act, the relay controller itself are the two wires to the isolated sections. So yours will look a lot neater. Don't think that it's uh, a difficult thing to do. Uh, the two lie, uh, signals at the moment are on green. If I bring the first locomotive forward... You'll see it passes over the isolated section and past the signal which hasn't changed. Now this is nothing against train tech. It's because they don't advise that you put them on the inside of curves because the locomotive naturally swings away from the sensor. Um, but it's the only track I had. So if I just do it with my finger, you'll see it's now changed to red. Now if I bring a second locomotive, this short o, GWR 040 sensor, you will see that whilst the Smoky Joe is in that block with the signal red, the GWR locomotive will not go past that point because it has hit the bit of the sensor which is dead because the signal is red. If I move Smokey Joe onwards, I can just do this manually. If I move it onwards and flick the other signal red, this signal goes to green and the GWR continues without me doing anything. And it stopped there because the other signal was red when it got there. Because I've not... Well, for starters, these are small 040 locomotives. Uh, secondly, the track isn't very clean. And thirdly, I haven't soldered all the wires to the track. It isn't the best, but you do get the idea. And you can link as many of those up as you need to. And you can just sit back and watch for hours as your locomotives go around in a loop, never crashing into each other. And that is it for another Model Rail video. Our Model Rail shows you how to install automatic train control to your layout. Uh, as I've said, the problems that I've had with this very, very temporary setup uh, is nothing against train tech. The actual equipment works fine. If you go and look on the train tech website, you'll see it working properly how it's supposed to. Um, so the problems I've had here are not across the range, uh, but it still shows you how to set everything up. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. If you'd like to see more of these tutorial videos, let us know in the comments what you'd like to see demonstrated. And happy modelling.